swim. I said, you know, yeah. I can't believe him. I can't believe this guy. Will Rogers, World Airport, Oklahoma City. I'm waiting for two of the guys to arrive. One of them from Denver is still, his plane's from Denver, still on time. The, uh, the one that's coming in via Dallas way, they've been held up because of the weather out Oh, <laughs> Jimmy! God damn it! It's good to see you, Rick. Good to see you. Waymakers was uh, chosen as a lead guitarist with them. Uh, I played bass with the Waymakers, but back then I didn't really know what a bass was and what you did with it. When I was in a band with the Waymakers, uh, I was a drummer for for them. The instrument I primarily played was the was rhythm guitar. Actually, completely from scratch, none of us knew anything much about it. I didn't know what role it played uh, in the organization of a musical group, uh, other than the fact that it, it made low tones. So I can't remember how it came about, but Somehow I, I bought a set of traps, what we call them then, I don't know what they call them now. I could play some on the bass and uh, some, sometimes we would actually switch out when we were doing a gig at, uh, at, at especially some of the teenage clubs and things that we played at. They came to me and uh, asked me if I want to form a, a group with them. How I came about to playing bass uh, in a group 
that uh, and I mean I had never played before, played with anybody, had only been playing a couple months. Uh, so the only thing that I can gather is that I must have been a real good liar. Finally, we got to a point that I asked my folks to send my jazz master to uh, Fort Clayton, California. Uh, Fort Clayton Canal song, yeah. So I had I had my own instrument too. I mean, everybody had their very own instrument, and so did I. I had my own instrument also. So uh, I I thought I sounded pretty good anyway. We were versatile in our music. Uh, we we primarily play, play, were a rock band. We, we was rock and roll. <laughs> If you look at all those elements that that we played and played well for that time period, uh, it was it was quite uh, quite incredible. Basically, we were just young guys who loved life. We grabbed a hold of something. We were all interested in the same thing. We were driven by the same purposes and same causes. We wanted to make music. We wanted to be successful. And we practice. We practice. We practice. We practice. That practice, and we got to a point that uh, you know we become pretty good in the music we do. Somewhere in 1961, we started playing, actually meeting, seeing each other at our service clubs and things, and, and we actually started hearing each other play before we, before we played together. We started all in 60, 62, we practiced in 63, and we did some entertainment contest in Clayton. We entered the first contest, which was a post-wide contest, the whole post. Won it hands down. Actually, I thought the guys we were playing against were better than us. As far as the contest, you know, the, the, the first uh, uh, the group, uh, as I said, we, we, we did bad. We really annihilated them. It was dirty what we did. And we won it. It was just, just that. It's that easy. The next group was the was the was the, the culmination of the command. That was all the people, the participants from the entire USAR Carib. They were the predominant uh, entertainment for everyone in the canal zone at that time, and I think we just pushed them out. The USAR Carib. Uh, uh, entertainment contest down in the Caribbean. That was the whole Southern Command. We won a chance to go to Fort Lee, Virginia to participate in the 1963 All Army Entertainment Contest. We won and for the next couple months uh, we lived a dream. You know, we lived a dream. Uh, we were in the Army, in it, but not of it. You know. That was, I mean, that was cool. It was living a dream. We went to, we got a, uh, got to go to Fort Lee, Virginia for this big, 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 big event. And, and once we were done with the contest there, uh, Uncle Sam sent us in different places of the year. Uh, the branch of army branches, and so we're completely uh, separated from each other, without even have a chance to really to find out, you know, where we going or where we going to be. 
that's how fast it went. It's over. The bubble broke and we didn't know where anybody went. Bud went there, Frog went there, Willie went there, I went back to Panama. Just boom, it happened. First thing I know, I was in Port Seal, Oklahoma, scratching my head, wondering where the rest of the guys were. Uh, it's as if uh, the Army said, well, okay, you guys uh, won this, but uh, we don't want you staying together and getting big ideas that you're gonna, gonna take over the world with your music, so we're gonna split you up. And I, I, they started taking us immediately, splitting us up whenever we got back to Panama. How did that happen? It's almost like, okay, this morning you got the, the waitress comes up and she fed you something to eat. You got done eating and you were supposed to meet somebody. No, you aren't going. You're going down here, honey. And you don't have a chance to call this person that you were supposed to meet. It just, it exploded. Everything, and it, it was, we were in dismay. You know, it was, it was, uh, that's unexplainable. And there was 48 years uh, from then to now. When we said goodbye, that was in 63, and that's it. That was about almost 48 years ago. We have not seen or spoken with each other in 48 years or give or take a month or so. And, and when we separated, I realized that that there there was an attachment from me to that group of guys to the other four guys. I think the Waymakers were probably my first family. The bond that we have among the Waymakers uh, members are. Uh, cannot be duplicated for some reason. There's some special bond, you know, among us. Uh, it was all volunteer. We all were willing. We were capable, able, and we jumped in and we did. So I have used that in my life dozens and countless of times. Uh, that, that The fact that that I could, did, and succeeded at doing something totally volunteer with a group of people. The way we bonded to, to have, it, it seemed to me like a family. And uh, uh, I don't think I ever, I ever forgot that, but I never let anyone or, or I never got close to anyone after we broke up. So I, I didn't, I, I, maybe the way we were split apart, maybe. All the hundreds of musicians that I've worked with, good and bad, uh, I have never had the camaraderie, the, the, the bond, I guess is a good word, is the best word, with a group of individuals from the same group that has impacted me. Uh, it's like a scar you get when you're, uh, you know, I have a scar right here. That happened in uh, 1969. And uh, every time I see it, I remember how it happened. I know when it was and all the situations surrounding it and, and all that. But in the same way I have this scar, and we all have scars, I guess. But that is a way that the Waymakers have scarred my soul. And it's not a score, it's, it's, a, it's a painting. It's a launch pad, um, you get a thousand names. I just love them and I, I just, certainly, certainly they love me. I mean, it, it shows up because I'm pretty crippled up. And so, they, they, it's a brotherhood.
it's it's a brother. It's, we're brothers. <laughs> Someone, someone as sweet, as sweet as you But sometimes, when you do pretty little things But oh, what a feeling to be in love oh, oh, To be in love When I'm feeling fearless Yeah, yeah, yeah Surprise, Dan you're looking good, old buddy. Yeah. I think that's gonna happen. Oh sure. sure. If he let, but if he lets his air out, he's gonna he's gonna take the lens out of his camera. You stick to Straighten his jacket up a little bit there, Rick. God, he looks like he just slid off a hay wagon or something. Yeah. This idiot kisses me, I want somebody to hit it. making the the group reunion is uh, you know I'm, I'm heart wrenched it it uh, all five of us are, are still living that was wonderful news when I first uh, when I first realized that all of us was living honestly to be honest when we mentioned the reunion I would have been happy with three guys here because of our age because of the time that had passed since we had done our last thing together. And at that, you know, uh... I'm a little disappointed. No, hell no, I'm a bunch disappointed. I really am. I'm, I'm, and I'm kind of pissed off at him. W Willie has got, you know, Willie has got some, something going on that, uh, that I probably have never experienced in, uh, so uh, our love for Willie and our attachment to Willie is going to is going to be there. It's going to stay there. We're going to continue to communicate with Willie, and and, uh, and if 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 this thing ever happens again, you know Willie is going to be here, uh, the same as we wanted him here this time. I'm pissed at him. So that hey, that's the way I am about it. Now he's now he's got me where I don't give a damn if I see him or not now, because we all went through a lot of effort to get here. It's of course it's a very very great disappointment for 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 me and for the guys uh, because he's a very he's detrimental to the uh, uh, existence of the waymakers. He's a key player because he's our singer. Willie Rogers is has a fantastic voice, incredible incredible voice, and he really is actually the uh, how architect of the the songs that we perform. He's the guy that really wrote the words for it. Also, that's what really meant for us. And it's uh, of course it's incomplete for, for us. Willie was destined 
There's, I don't think there's anything else in life that Willie could have done and made a living at it. But he appears to have done so well in, in, his, uh, in his pursuit of the art. Uh, I yeah, I'm pissed. That's how I feel about it. That's what, there it is. But yet we're still happy because the four of us are here. Well, that still means a lot to us. I'm sitting here uh, with these guys here, and I look at them every day. I look at Rick this morning. I looked at Frog this morning. I looked at Bud. I looked at his face. I looked at his hair. I looked at Rick. I looked at his mouth. And uh, you know, it's his hands. And 48 years is just absolutely. It's an absolutely indescribable. My daughter asked me, What's, what was it like when you saw them? And I can't describe the indescribable. There's nothing, I can articulate a lot of things, but I can't, there's nothing within me that can make you understand what my heart feels. It's as if we hadn't missed a stroke knowing each other. I mean, the mannerisms that, that doesn't seem like they've changed. The voices don't, well, Rick's voice changed a bit. And uh, it's like we just, we hadn't, we hadn't seen each other in these 48 years, but yet we didn't, we didn't miss any time. One, two, three, four.
i 